Hey everybody, welcome back to another Diecast Review. This is Kevin Harvick's 2004 RCR 35th Anniversary Elite. Um, this is a car they ran, I'm not sure where it ran at, but it was an anniversary for their 35th. Obviously this year I believe they are at, are they at 50 already? Oh my gosh, they are. 50th anniversary for RCR last year, not this year, but uh, no, maybe it was this year. <sighs> my brain is mush. My brain is mush. I don't remember. Last year. Yeah, it was the gold cars they ran last year. 50th anniversary was last year. Okay, 2018. 19. Goodness gracious. Brain is mush. Let's go back to that. Um, anyway, let's take a look at this die cast. Um, so let me see if I got a production number. One of 1,200, which for 2005 is kind of along the lines of the middle. Uh, we got, obviously, the Wrangler paint scheme on here. The number 29, numbers slanting forward. Kind of a Childress. Obviously, DEI adopted that as well. You can see the number three there on the door that uh, he always had there while he was running the 29 car. Good wrench on the right, left rear corner there. Snap on Sylvania, Duracell, uh, and a bunch of sponsors in there. Kevin Harvick up there on the name rail with the American flag. Got the next Dell Cup Series logos and all that. Go to the front. We got a black valence. There you can see the uh, the guards on the uh, on the air intake, and then another one up there. Got that bright yellow front end with the good wrench on there. Um, let's go ahead and take a look under the hood there. There's our engine detail on these Elites. Gorgeous as ever. We've got plenty of hoses and wires. Um, just a good look. Any Elite looks really good, honestly, to me. Um, I can't remember if I can get... No, I can't. I couldn't get the window net on on this. But the detail inside the cab is good. Uh, you've got seat belts, shifters. Each individual gauge has its own numbers on it. Just a lot of good stuff on there. Uh, down the right side, it's the same as the left. Each individual hood pin there. You can see the number 29, good wrench, all that in there. There's our fuel cell in the back with the braces and tethers. There you can see each individual spoke as well on the spoiler. Uh, roof flaps do deploy. They didn't normally in 2004 in terms of on the ARC, but they do on the Elite. Oh, almost. There, I got one. Got my hand on one, and I popped it open. There we go. So there's the uh, there's the roof flaps, and the two tethers there. Uh, I don't actually it did stay open, but normally they can they don't. But there you can see that. Uh, underneath we do have DIN number two twenty six, working rear suspension and a working front suspension. Kind of one of the cooler parts of the elites um, from this era is they did have the working full suspension, and most of them didn't. So um, that was kind of neat because most of them didn't have any suspension, front or rear. Um, I think the front may have by then, but not the rears. But, um, yeah, overall, it's a really neat uh, throwback car. Before they were doing throwbacks, um, it's a good-looking car. Obviously, the Elite. I love Elite, so I love this car for that reason, just having the Elite. But um, it's definitely uh, a nice throwback from 2004. Um, I, as I said, I don't even remember where they had run this car at originally. Um, so make sure if you know that, put that down in the comments where this car ran at, if you're a Harvard fan or anyone that remembers that. But, uh, anyway, that'll wrap up my review. Thank you all for watching. Really appreciate it. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun jargon. Um, and then make sure you turn on the notification bell so you don't miss an upload. But uh, that'll be uh, all for Race Grays. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next Diecast Review.